Hey, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Sintal, and he's Venkat. We are both from Dell Technologies, uh, CTO team, uh, part of Sonic for a long time. Uh, so before we dive into Suzuki today, I wanted to provide a quick overview on observability. So what is observability? Imagine you have a black box. You cannot see what's going on inside it, but you can observe its external outputs. Observability is that very ability to understand the internal state of a system based on its solely about its external outputs. This means we can identify and troubleshoot the problem swiftly and more precisely using the only information we receive uh, from the outside. So now let's deep dive into what, uh, a bit deeper into what network observability is. What does it mean? Well, it is an extension of the concept of observability into the realm of networks. It is all about uh, gaining insight into your internal network, <coughs> internal workings of a network, understanding how the internal state impacts the business objectives and user experience. It is about being able to answer your questions about your network quickly and easily. So that brings us to an important question. Is network monitoring the same as network observability? The short answer is no. Uh, although the terms are often used interchangeably, there are crucial differences uh, between the, the two. Network monitoring focuses on measuring and tracking the performance of the system. On the other hand, network observability provides you a uh, deep understanding of the system itself. So to sum up, while network monitoring keeps a constant eye on your system performance, uh, observability goes a step further, offers insight into the inner workings of your network itself. So that's a, that's a major, major difference. So it's, it's, it's good to understand both the concept, knowing how to implement them successfully, significantly enhances your network performance and understanding of your network. So choosing is not about whether you're choosing monitoring or observability. It's basically how you can integrate both in your system management uh, principles. So show of hands, how many people are aware of tools Suzuki before uh, coming here, right? Uh, today, we are going to introduce to a fascinating tool that has been revolutioning network observability. It is called SuzyQ. Uh, what exactly is SuzyQ? Okay, SuzyQ is an open source multi-vendor network observability framework and tool. This tool allows us to analyze your network using vendor agnostic uh, queries and methods. This means you can use SuzyQ to understand, diagnose, and improve your network, regardless of what hardware or software vendors are using. The story of SuzyQ began in early 2020 when it was founded by Dinesh and Justin, two experts who foresaw the need for a better way to observe and analyze the networks itself. Uh, the main goal of SuzyQ is to improve uh, understanding of your network. It does that by gathering data using an agentless approach. That means that you don't need to have specific installations in the, uh, the NAS, vendor NAS itself. So you are able to collect all the information in abstracted form uh, so that way, it's basically it standardized the data format so that it's easy for you to compare and analyze. And Suzuki stores all the data files in a parquet, a popular big data format known for its efficiency and flexibility. So you will be able to uh, have fast queries based on the uh, data, and then you can gather much more insights uh, into the network. So you can use, uh, it provides multiple management interface, the command line interface, a graphical user, REST API, and even a Python programmatic interface to go and analyze uh, the data you collected via that platform. It has a very simple architecture. So as you can see, uh, you have a telemetry uh, collector which collects the information from multiple things using uh, SSH and uh, REST API. And then it has, uh, I'm not gonna see the screen, a uh, parser which parses the data and then it comes back uh, and normalizes the data and then updates into a universal repository. So from there, you will be able to query the system. So one thing which amazed me, I'll tell you a real life example, right? So let's take how Suzuki can empower you without an action, with actionable ins insights and about your network, right? That's what the most compelling feature of Suzuki, that's what I love about it when I initially saw the tool. Immediately the tool, I think they started development around April. I think I made my first contribution from Dell to support Sonic in uh, around September timeframe itself. So because I took the tool and then I see the value it provided, right? You can ask what kind of questions I can ask the network, right? In terms of, right, what kind of, what are the software versions I'm running in the system, right? It could, it could be either a trivial yes or no questions 
or it could be a very complex question. What happened to my network at 3 a.m. in the morning? Why node A cannot talk to node B? Right? It can go that deep. To give a quick example, right? So we were in the customer environment trying to deploy Sonic. We were asking them how much uh, Mac table scale they need, and they were talking about 140,000. Our devices doesn't support it. We need to implement Mac carving in order to increase the Mac L2 table size because they are an L2 network. And then we asked them, can we try this one tool, uh, which doesn't do much harm to their network. It just reads one variable. We, we tested it a couple of times in their production network. And then we test, it has a feature called gather once. And then we gathered the data. And what we found out immediately within one hour, one hour the customer was so surprised, right? It, it, they had only 20, 8,000 unique MAC address. Whatever they thought about their network, they had 130,000 MAC addresses is not true. So it was so powerful and to understand your network, what you're running. So today it's all very complicated. So this one, what impressed me was, you have thousands of devices across your data center, it gives you one CLI to you. So in a single, you don't have to log into any of the devices. It give, provides you one single CLI. You can query all your devices and see what's their state of. You can combine the queries in multiple ways. You can assert the system. Uh, so that's what brings the power, power of Suzuki, in my opinion, right? So typically, the other user example I could think of is we, after we deployed, typically in one of the customers, whenever we go deploy and troubleshoot, when the network is down, we need to find, they'll say, okay, this is the MAC address or IP address, which is having a slow problem. So now the networking team has to go and find where exactly the problem is. So what happens is it took us, so we need to go into log into a system, go into a central pod and see where the MAC address or the IP address subnet is. Okay, okay, this goes to this, this pod. So okay, let me log into the border gateway of that pod. And then I log into border gateway of that pod and then see, okay, where this subnet is located. And then I track that down to the actual rack. It, take, it takes me about 20 to 30 minutes to do that process itself. When the network is down, we don't want to go and do that kind of you just ask a simple query in Suzuki, find this IP or MAC. It gives you where all the MAC, where it is originated, where all it is there across all the systems. So it's very easy for you to go and immediately tell and pinpoint what's going on in the system. So that's what I really love about Suzuki, right? So as I said, uh, Sonic integration of Suzuki was introduced by Dell at September. Suzuki uses, I initially when I started using it, I didn't want to use REST or management API, so I wanted to be really native so that we can support not only community distribution as well as distribution, other distributions where people are supporting like us, Dell. So we wanted to work on both sides, so we used the regular SSH, Sonic CLI, Linux CLI, and FRR CLI, so that it works both on uh, community Sonic as well as the enterprise distributions. And then it supports almost all the features that today, uh, being an interface, BGP or BGP VPN, MC lag, so all those features are already supported in Sonic. Uh, we wanted to give you a quick glimpse of it. So I just, so this is how simple it is. Uh, in the sense that you go to a Suzuki CLI, you say what is ARP, and then it gives you what you want to do, summarize, and then it tells you, I want to see what all the ARPs at leaf one. You can dump for the entire data center or entire pod, what you have, and you can specifically query, okay, I want to do this leaf, I want to do this namespace, or I want to do look at this pod, right? It's the entire, it's one CLI, you don't have to log into any devices, it's one CLI where you can gather that insight, right? More better is the programmable interface. You can assert your network. You can do an upgrade and after upgrade and before upgrade, you can say whether is there anything down in my network, right? Is BGP is, is the way it's behaving. Am I, am I getting all the routes which I'm supposed to get it? So you can programmatically verify. You can put it into your CI CD systems and programmatically verify this uh, thing. And it also has a simple GUI to understand uh, the path and other stuff. Whatever you're doing in CLI, it can be done via uh, GUI as well, but I prefer CLI. We are network engineers. We're still using CLIs, but the way I think about CLI and seeing that as a single management pane, that's what opened my eyes in Suzuki. Right. That's why I allowed about the tool because I, it's immediately I'm able to understand the network. We just wanted to give a quick glimpse of what Suzuki is today uh, to you. So we have a short demo. Hello, everyone. Um, so we took this uh, sample topology wherein we have uh, you know two parts uh, and then connected together with the central part. So uh, in this demo, we are going to focus more on the uh, part one. And then uh, I have the SUSIQ inventory files. Uh, basically, I have all the IP addresses 
mentioned there with the SSH connection to, to, towards all these part one nodes. So basically what I have is uh, all leaf nodes running Community Sonic 2022 November release and then the spine nodes are basically the Enterprise Sonic uh, um, version uh, distribution by Dell Technologies. So this is what um, the versions, you know, I'm just showing what are all the things uh, present in the um, Sonic switches. The, this is the version and uh, all the various containers running in each switch, you know. Um, So now, and then we are going going to the inventory file. Uh, just I mentioned like the inventory file has, has the all the nodes IP address and then the you know username password, um, and this is the you know Docker I'm running for the SUSE queue with the port exposed 8501 for the GUI, and then I'm I'm basically starting the polar uh, for the inventory file. So the polar could be continuous or uh, the snapshots are continuous basically periodically it pulls all the nodes and then uh, you know stores the information in the big data like Sintel mentioned. And then there's a snapshot view as well. So you don't want to continuously monitor, pull the nodes and then you know do it, right? If you want to just get what is the uh, snapshot of my pod and a given point in time, right? You can, you can do that as well. So now, right now I'm just going into the uh, Sonic Suzuki CLI and then giving various queries, right? For example, device show. Device show is gonna tell us for a given part, what are all the nodes available and the IP addresses and the, you know, the image uh, being used in, the, in those nodes, etc. So, and then there are various options as well uh, in the device show. For example, you can um, group by you know, columns, right? There are various columns you can just put, okay, for a given um, part, uh, what are all the host names available? So you can just uh, group by, uh, host names and then uh, there are other options uh, you know under the device basically you can get what are all the images running on this uh, pod so you can just basically based on this information you can see okay this these are all the nodes needs upgrade for for security or whatever reasons right so you can uh, do all that so and then, then the the current tables uh, these are all the tables being supported uh, in various NAS today, so we have enabled that support for Sonic as well. So this is going to pr uh, provide all the you know ARP, um, BGP, uh, MLAG, and all those informations are available currently. So you can very well enhance uh, the code uh, to have additional uh, capabilities as well. So and then this talks about what are all the in what is the interval and what are how many rows are there in the database and all that. So based on this information, uh, we can, we are going to execute uh, the various other queries that are. Uh, available for example bgp show so bgp show is going to show what are how many uh, bgp sessions are available across pod right so wh what is the yes number uh, being used and what is the st session state and etc so and then there is a bgp asset so it's going to basically it's all pass right now so if, if there are um, you know some problems in the in the nodes so and basically it's going to mention that what is the problem and uh, you know what is the current state of that particular node so th this way you can we quickly debug and uh, you know what's going on this particular node and then uh, you know we can quickly recover from from that so the various uh, you know routes summarize is going to provide how many routes are there and then uh, you know the various um, uh, arp information available in there and then you can see uh, the, their status uh, you can basically filter by um, the particular leaf node, filter by IP address, filter by MAC address, and the various options are available. In fact, you can use regular expression as well uh, to uh, you know, pinpoint a particular IP address uh, you know, from, from a given node. And then the MLAG, MCLAG information is available as well. So what are all the nodes available and what is the you know, MRA, MLAG role uh, the, 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 on that particular node? And then the VLAN show. So this is basically going to give you the global view of what's available in the pod. So the VLAN is, is one example where how many VLANs are available, how many ports are uh, members of those VLANs. You know, uh, all that information you can you can query and you know can uh, as you uh, you know as usual you can put all the you know filters uh, like any other commands we have. So and then you can route show you can very well filter uh, the various columns uh, various uh, host names uh, namespace you know and all those filtering uh, logic you can apply on the data available in the db so 
So I'm going inside the uh, core router now to basically bring down to showcase the assert functionality available in the Suzy queue. So I'm just brought down one of the uh, link. So this should reflect on the BGB session right now. So I'm ju I'll, I'll just go back to the, um, you know, Suzy queue CLI to execute the BGP assert to see what's the status of the, uh, you know. So right now in the um, Sonic, you see the session went to idle state from established, right? So if I go back to the um, uh, Suzy queue CLI, uh, it's going to reflect on the state and uh, you can easily see it. So the, the result would be failed saying BGP notifications and uh, whole time are expired because the, we brought down the link. So this is, you know, one example. So there could be many things you can observe uh, uh, with this uh, Suzy queue. So like Sendil mentioned, you, there are, you know, times, um, uh, start time, end time and all those things are there. You can execute uh, complex queries in order to get, uh, you know, uh, what's uh, happen, happening in the, you know, pod network. So these are all the information so you're you know, available with Suzy Q. Um, uh, with that, I would like to uh, end this demo and uh, hand over to Sendil to, uh, for any closing thoughts and, uh, you know, call for action. Thank you. So I think, thank you, Vengat. I think hopefully this would have provided you a glimpse of what Sonic is and a good introduction to you. Uh, so Suzuki is an, uh, licensed under an uh, Apache license, so which makes it freely available to use for modification. And an enterprise version is also available, offering additional features and support. Uh, so here are the key resources. I wouldn't walk you through all these things. So there is a, your first stop is your GitHub, where you can go and play around it. It's just four commands for you. You do a Docker pull, put your IPs, and start the polar, you are done. So since it's a columnar database, you can filter and query, you can slice and dice it any way you want. So that's that's what it's more powerful about it. Uh, so key takeaways, right? So network observability is not just another buzzword in the IT industry. It's a crucial concept that has tangible impacts on the organization of all sizes, right? Uh, achieving network observability comes with a plethora of benefits. Firstly, it enhances your network visibility, enabling you to understand your internal network workings. The first thing and foremost, I I'm, I'm keep repeating this myself, most of the customers we went in, when we go into, right? So they don't clearly understand what's going on in their network. So this provides you first and foremost to better understand your network. What is there in my network? Am I running VLANs? How many VLANs have, are my, in my network in total? Right? How many MAC addresses? What is the scale? Did I, uh, my uplink is all almost done or how much is the bandwidth? Do I, do I need to up, uh, upgrade in the next cycle? Do I need to upgrade for higher grade switches? How many ports are still open? How much bandwidth still I can support? So some basic questions, to start with some basic questions, some complicated questions, a time series, how my network has grown over the period of time. Right? It can do all those things for you, right? So the key thing is about, uh, so Suzuki, <coughs> uh, Suzuki also allows you to access information without risk of logging in, right? So that's a key feature I already talked about. So you don't have to log in each and every device. It's just one CLI, you do it. And then it takes away all the mechanics of parsing, coding, and all those things from you because it's an abstract information. You can compare all this data across Sonic, Arista, Cisco, Juniper, everyone together, right? It gives you the same format for everybody, so it's easy for you to understand because more, most of the networks are heterogeneous networks. So uh, it provides a holistic over time. So, so that's the benefits of Son, uh, Suzuki and Sonic. So I would like to take a shot. And finally, as we come to the end of this discussion, uh, the profound impact uh, SuzyQ can have in your network observability space. We'd like to take few calls of action. Firstly, encourage you to explore and understand what SuzyQ is. It's much more simple. Uh, so take it for a test drive. I was telling uh, Tim, uh, it's it's just one command. You just, right now we can pull in and then show. We actually have a live demo we wanted to show you, so we didn't want to switch laptop, so that's why I stopped it. If somebody is interested, Venget has this in his laptop, so you can, you can play around with SuzyQ if you want, uh, take some time. Uh, so take it for a test drive, try to deploy it in your lab networks whenever you do lab. So see the powerful for your, how, how powerful it is for yourself. And then uh, come back and contribute, right? In conclusion, Shuziki is more than just a tool. It's a community as well, like how Sonic, a growing community of dedicated network enthusiasts who, who are uh, trying to make network much better, to manage the network much better. So we invite you to join this community, learn and contribute. Uh, thanks for listening to us. Uh, if you have any questions, I'd happy to take that. Yeah. yeah. I don't want to specify any names, but I know that few companies are already using it. It's been deployed. 
and uh, they are all happy and they're asking for you know, other NASA support for us from Dell VL. Uh, so, so they're asking, right, why can't you do this for other summits? Right, so uh, it's already deployed. It's not part of founder chain. No, I don't think so. I'd love the question. Uh, thank you. So I think this is valuable. I have not seen this tool anywhere in the open source out there. There are a lot of tools for monitoring and other stuff, for observability in the application world. For networking, there's nothing there. This is the first tool which we've seen and then uh, got impressed. Right now, there's a very small community uh, which works on it. It's, it's all GitHub. So there is no, it's not under any foundation. It's all in GitHub. Dinesh? Dinesh from Cumulus, if you... Uh, no, Cum former Cumulus employee and Amazon, uh, Justin from Amazon. Now I think even Linux Foundation, uh, Neela is the co-founder right now. They, because they this they saw the traction, I think they started an enterprise version of it. Okay. And Neela and Dinesh are heading that. Nothing. Nothing. Yeah, that's as I said, right? So when I implemented this for Sonic, uh, we used, we didn't want to, uh, at the time, because this was 2020, the management, management framework is not there yet. It is not. So we, I tried to use, uh, even though we internally had management framework, I didn't want to just support management framework. I wanted to be, it, it supports both community and uh, Dell versions of it. So I, I used to implement this uh, with the CLI piece of it. One thing, because it's already supported Cumulus and FRR, it's much more easier to adapt to Sonic that way as well. So that is another reason why we went that route. So it, it was very, uh, it's not a big effort to integrate Sonic into Suzuki. For that matter, any NAS, uh, it's, it's a straightforward way to implement, to bring in other stuff. Yeah, it is an SSS access. Uh, uh, that show you how you can pull the inventory. You can pull the inventory from Netbox. You can pull the inventory from Ansible. Uh, you can use the keys. You don't have to give username and password. So all those are supported. You just download the Docker, update your inventory, start the Polar. That's about it. Once you have it, you have access to this, uh, the CLI. And you'll be really amazed, I'm telling you. When you see that the entire network and then seeing it one shot and then going for all the CLIs, if I do a MAC address and then say unique MAC address in the system or unique how much devices I have, so it's one CLI for all the boxes. You have 1,000 boxes, you just dump. It's thousands and thousands of rows. So you, it's up to you how do you want to dice it and slide it. Because it's a columnar database and it can go across tables, uh, so you can mix and match however you want. Yes. Yes. And yeah, it's just scraping the data. And then uh, if you think that it'll be a bigger burden, the each polar, each table has a separate timer. So you can tune it according to your network, how big is your network. You don't want to pull that much. You can slow it down, fast it, speed it up. So those things are possible. It's pure uh, CLI scraping kind of thing today. And you can use REST API as well. I would eventually want to migrate to the REST API and structured format, but right now it's all purely CLA. Oh, no, REST API, Suzuki is still outside, right? There is no agent. So we are just making the REST calls to the Sonic and then get the data back, right? But it comes as a structured data. Right now I am trying to scrape the data with regular expression and everything. If somebody changes Sonic CLI changes tomorrow, somebody introduces a new CLI, my regular expression might not work going forward, right? So I have to keep updating 
this text stuff has some formats to make sure that it's always compatible. Right? So that's what the, the con side. So I would like to migrate to, uh, as soon as we have the full management framework support. So we have the management, we are planning to uh, additional supports for management framework is coming in Sonic, right? With that, we should be able to support all the features via the standard REST API formats. Uh, no, there is work required in Suzuki. It's other way around. So yeah, it's it's reverse way. So what I do is been because we are the I am supporting Sonic. So I will go when the release comes out. I'll run Suzuki once, make sure that everything is there. It's not only me. There are a lot of folks in the community who who actually deployed in Sonic. They are really interested in this one. So they go. They have actually provided a lot of fixes as well, patches as well to this one. No, nothing, nothing like that. Yeah. Anything more? Thank you. Thank you so much. I appreciate all your time listening in. Thank you.